Welcome to the 30-something Michigan Runner of the Year Awards. With us we have Eric Green, Nick Stanko, and Mary Beth Reeder. Eric, you really went after this series big time, and you, Steve was chasing you, wasn't he? Yeah, Steve Menevic, uh, he was my major competition for the whole series. Uh, if it wasn't for him, I don't think anybody would, uh, in, I, it would have been wide open, and I don't think it would have been as fun running these races without being uh, pushed. Well, one of the races I saw you at was Steve's run, and you had a really difficult start. Tell us about that. Yeah, I had, uh, you know, you have these young guns who want to, you know, get out there in front. And, of course, right at the start, I got clipped, and I pretty much, on the, on the asphalt, went, you know, hands first. And I had scrapes, and when I got up, I was bleeding, and I still ran the whole 6.2 miles, and I finished, and I had blood all over. and. Yeah. You couldn't wait to the nice soft trails. You had to do it on the asphalt, right? Yeah, I had to be on the asphalt. So it was a, it's a nice uh, trail race. Nice and, uh, and yeah, it would have been better if I would have wiped out there. You tackled a lot of these races. You were second master at the Bay City 8K, first yeah. master at the Meteor 10K, second master at the Riverbank Run, first master at Steve's Run, first master at the Kensington Challenge, and first master at the Detroit Free Press Flagstar Marathon. Which is the most memorable? Uh, probably the, oh, they were all pretty good. Uh, probably the St. Pat's race because I got beat by Steve and he motivated me to, you know, go hardcore in the series because he said that he was going to be running the, the races. So, yeah. Well, good luck. I hope you snag another one tomorrow. Uh, oh, so it's going to be tough, but yeah, I think I will. <laughs> of course it's tough. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Eric. Mary Beth, we've seen you run lots of places, and for the race series, it looks like you tackled it deliberately. Some people do and some people don't. You really had a great race at the Riverbank Run. You were the first master at 140.46. You were the second master at the Deemer 5K, which is also a really competitive race. And here at the Crim, you were the third master. You had serious competition in all those races. Yeah, those are competitive races. Um, I like the Riverbank because I get away <laughs> overnight. <laughs> That's always good with two teenage daughters. Um, yeah, I mean, they're all competitive. I, I, I mean, Monica Joyce and... Um, you know, Laurel Park are amazing athletes. So, you know, when you're competing with at that level, they're just, they're they're out there with the open girls. I, I you know, these legs don't, <laughs> they're getting tired. <laughs> but, you know, I, um, I enjoy um, going out there to all of those races. They're wonderful. Yeah, so. Well, it was fun seeing you this year at the uh, Club Cross Country Championships in Lexington, Kentucky. And you did, was it, was it 10K? And you said it was short, piece uh -huh. of cake? Oh, God. <laughs> Something like that? I forgot the distance. No, it was grueling. I, I never have run a cross-country race, and I was surprised how my lungs were searing. I mean, it was really hard. I don't know if it's the the hill or the um there were hills there but the um the ground or something but it was very intense i was surprised by that i enjoyed going out there it was a nice experience and my daughter is running cross country and she goes see how hard it is see how hard i'm like yeah I, I, you know it is hard i you know now i understand so well mary beth uh, congratulations and we look forward to seeing you do well tomorrow oh well thank you very much i appreciate this thank you you're welcome so nick you you look like you took off after the series. You started with the 8K in, in Bay City and uh, really had a great year. You were third overall at the Crim in your uh, um, for Michigan men. I think you were behind Boaz and who? Who else? Boaz and uh, Danny Jackson, That's right. who runs for Notre Dame. Yeah, yeah. Who kind of came out came out onto the roads from nowhere and started doing really well. Yeah. Yeah. But what great company to be in and um, then. You tackled the Free Press Marathon, and you came in first. Tell us about that race. Um, it was it was actually a really just enjoyable race. Um, going in, I wasn't really sure who was kind of show up that day. Um, you know, in the years past, there's been kind of uh, some Africans that show up and will just kind of walk away with it. Uh, but this year, it was just myself and uh, Chad. 
Chad Johnson um, from Brooks Hansons, and uh, we just kind of ran side by sa side the whole race and um, kind of helped each other out and we were both trying to run a, a decent time and uh, the weather was really nice and um, towards the end of the race you know it just got down to it where the last couple miles we knew it was going to race and uh, we just both went after it and uh, I ended up kind of having the better day and uh, it, it was a really nice experience. When did you start pulling away from him? Um, I would say probably around 23, 24 miles. Um, after about, I think, 15, we decided to change leads every mile just to help each other out. And then when I took my turn, I just, you know, felt it was time. And if I had a chance, I had to go then because, you know, Chad's got some pretty good track credentials. So uh, I knew I had to go with a couple miles to go. So what were you thinking that last mile when you had no one to, in sight in front of you? Um, Really, uh, I guess I was worried I was going to get caught, you know, that something was going to happen and you just you just keep on running as hard as you can and uh, coming down the home stretch probably until the last like 150, uh, you know, that's when I knew I won it. Um, but it, it definitely took a while to sink in. How did you celebrate? Um, we had family in town. Um, I'm from Wyandotte, Michigan, and so we went back to Wyandotte, and uh, our family was there, and my daughter was there, and so we just got to hang out and uh, enjoy the day. Well, it's always fun to enjoy it after a marathon, isn't it? <laughs> yes, yes, definitely. <laughs> well, the photo on the cover this year was Nick with the cross-country team in Hazlitt that he coaches. And you're also a teacher there, aren't you? Yes, I teach um, art at Hazlitt High School. And then um, my wife and I, my wife Teresa, we coach cross-country and then I coach track there. Well, one of the reasons I like this picture is any runner has heard so many times we're tired of it. I'm going to start running when I see people smiling when they run. They always look like they're so sad or so fierce. And, well, of course, people are concentrating. And we understand it. The people who don't run don't. But every single one of those kids is really smiling. How do you do it? Um, I think that's one of the big things about our team is we just try to have a lot of fun. I think it's important. Um, I think if you take running too seriously, you know, sometimes it can backfire. So, you know, when we go to the line with the kids, um, I'm always trying to joke around. I'm always kind of, you know, teasing the kids and they're teasing me back. And uh, I think it just lets them run kind of freely and uh, get the most out of the sport. Well, now I know a lot of coaches run with their team. I don't think very many of them could actually beat everybody on the team. How do you handle that? Um, I, I run with the kids every now and then, but mainly I'm kind of there coaching because I kind of like to see all the kids and encourage them. And, you know, I, if I'm running, I'm really just running with one or two kids. Um, so every now and then I'll go with an easy run, but majority of the time I'm on the sideline just kind of being their cheerleader. Well, Nick, we look forward to seeing you coming in on the front and high up in that money list at the 10-mile championship tomorrow. Good luck. Great. Thank you.